Oh hi! There's a moment in the film Love, Simon where the title character sits by himself on a ferris wheel hopeful that the guy he's fallen in love with through email will finally show his face. It's cinematic and ends in a first kiss as only a romantic comedy can and it absolutely doesn't happen in the book. Not that there's anything bad with that. As with any adaptation, there are things that need to be changed, should be changed, and matters of taste. Today, we're going to discuss some of the differences between the book and film, and whether they were beneficial or not. The plot of Love, Simon and the book it was based on, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, are generally similar. That is, our protagonist, Simon Spear, has a secret. He's gay. Shocker. After a fellow anonymous classmate posts on the school's Tumblr that they are also gay, he starts an email correspondence with him and soon falls in love. Meanwhile, another classmate named Martin stumbles upon these emails after Simon forgets to log out on a school computer. Martin decides to blackmail Simon in the hope that he can date the new girl, Abby. So the basic plot is the same, it's the specifics that are changed. In fact, in the last half of the book, it is so different from the movie that it changes some of the themes of the story. The appearance of the Daleks was a definite surprise. Before we get there though, let's discuss the key similarities between the book and the film. Number one, Simon is kind of bland, and this feels really mean to say, but there's not a whole lot of turmoil that Simon goes through. In both book and movie, Simon explicitly says that he knows his family is going to be fine with him coming out. He knows his friends will be okay with it as well. Because of that, there is no inherent suspense. Don't get me wrong, coming out is still not a simple thing, but if there was even a shred of a chance that he felt like he wasn't able to, then it would have added to the story. More than that, he's liked by most everyone, he has a great relationship with his parents and sisters, and he's a fairly good student. There's nothing there that makes it feel like a real struggle. I mean, except for the blackmail. I guess I shouldn't forget about the blackmail. Regardless, the fact that Simon is sort of bland permeates both book and movie. The second similarity is that they keep the idea that Bram and Simon are interacting via email. If you want a fancy $5 word, then you can say that the book is sort of an epistolatory novel. At least it's half like that. Epistolatory is the name they give to books that are written as if characters are writing letters back and forth. Dracula is probably the best example of this. In this case, it's just a 21st century update. Just with less vampires. It's a conceit that works really well in the book. You can see the timestamp at the beginning of their emails. You can beautifully see how the relationship grows over time. First with them being nervous and then eventually them feeling very safe with one another. I thought that in the movie it doesn't work as well. In much the same way as talking with an author about their process is much more interesting than watching somebody write. Which now that I think of it, maybe launching that new YouTube channel called Watch People Write Emails. I mean, that wasn't the best of ideas. The movie uses multiple different actors as the voice of the unseen boyfriend, but it gives the wrong impression that this is exactly who the person writing to Simon is, at least at first. I think by just having text on the page, it gives it more mystery as to who it could be, so that when it is revealed, it truly is a shock. Emo Phillips. Who would have guessed? That's a joke. I have to say quickly though, and this is number three, that I'm glad they kept Bram as a black character. Yes, this is partly me signaling how woke I am, but occasionally you'll still see book adaptations where they change people's ethnicities for no apparent reason. They definitely could have done that here, and they chose not to, which I commend them for. Let's get into the differences. I mentioned before how I felt that the last half of the book and film are entirely different, to the point where they feel like different stories. I discussed Call Me By Your Name last month. While there are certainly differences between the book and film, there are things that are left out and characters that are combined, but it was still essentially the same story. In Love, Simon, although the end is the same, how they get there drastically changes the themes and the message. Here are just a few of the things that happen in the book. Simon goes to a gay bar where he gets drunk instead of just a house party. Leah is not shown to be attracted to him. Simon has an older sister. Martin almost completely disappears after blackmailing Simon, only showing up to write an email and to be seen briefly as Simon walks past a car. Leah and Nora are in a band, and we get to see Simon and Bram's relationship in more detail. What is hammered home is how much Simon doesn't want to change the personal dynamics between himself and his friends and family. He wants to be able to be himself without announcing to the world that something is different. I would argue this is the main theme of the book, whereas the movie is really focused on the blackmail and how Simon overcomes that by accepting himself as he is. Early on here in the book, there's this passage. 
but I'm tired of coming out. All I ever do is come out. I try not to change, but I keep changing in all these tiny ways. I get a girlfriend, I have a beer, and every freaking time I have to reintroduce myself to the universe all over again. Which I completely relate to, especially with people who you've known for years. Maybe you change your opinion on something, you stop drinking coffee, you enjoy the gentle caress of a man. You need to make a statement that this is the new you when it doesn't necessarily feel like it warrants that. You are still you, but for a small thing. But Simon's mother has a great counterpoint to that. Near the end of the book, she says this. See, you're not a parent yet, so you can't understand. It's like you have this baby, and eventually he starts doing stuff. And I used to be able to see every tiny change, and it was so fascinating. And now I'm missing stuff, the little things, and it's hard to let go of that. It's great to see that parental love so fully realized. Simon is guilty of this as well. When it's revealed that Nora and Leah are in a band, he asks why nobody told him. And Nick responds, because you would have made a big deal. This is a specifically human reaction to these types of small revelations, and I'm not sure I've ever seen a story try to tackle that topic before. Really, by the end, Simon is realizing that these tiny changes aren't a burden, but something to celebrate. That each of us have unique quirks that make us us. The final passage of the book is about Simon introducing his boyfriend Bram to his parents. I can tell from her expression that a conversation is coming, some kind of awkward discussion about ground rules, some kind of big deal. But maybe this is a big deal. Maybe it's a holy freaking huge awesome deal. Maybe I want it to be. He's finally come around to truly revealing all the aspects of himself. Last thing, and it's a small nitpick, I'm curious why the book uses Oliver as the school musical that Simon is in, and the film uses Cabaret. I'm guessing it's a rights issue thing, but I'm still curious. So, what works better? I think the movie, quite rightly, made the group of friends much tighter and therefore when the blackmail is revealed, it does feel like a betrayal. In the book, it's revealed and resolved within a chapter, and so it doesn't carry as much weight. I also liked how they treated the character of Martin better in the movie. It's suggested in the novel, but it's made more plainly in the film that this is a guy who definitely made the wrong decision in blackmailing someone, but he isn't this terrible monster of a villain. He's human and is comfortable with himself, which is more than Simon can say. For everything else, the book does a far better job of delving into the characters because it has the time to, and the themes can be expanded upon. But here's the bad thing that I need to admit to. While I don't find either the book or movie bad, I also don't find them great. The kernel of the story is interesting to me, and the themes it explores feel new. But I need a more interesting or Maybe it's a flawed main character to really feel drawn in. And this is not a knock on young adult literature. I'm a big fan of a lot of it. I mean, I've read every John Green book, and I loved his latest Turtles all the way down, so it's not the genre that turns me off. Even with me saying that, I think that it is important to tell LGBTQ plus stories. I think it's good to include that in young adult novels. I just wanted more. I wanted something that was more than an okay story. But I could be wrong. What did you like? What didn't you like? Do you prefer the book or the movie? Why why am I so old that I can't enjoy anything? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. Liking, commenting, and subscribing do help, but if you want to support me even more, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter for $1 per month. Now I need to go look up and see what the next book and movie comparison I want to make is. Was Super Troopers 2 adapted from a book?